Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. Today, we're going to talk about keeping it simple. I've talked about this before. I've talked about these things many, many times. But we're going to go back over what I mean by keeping it simple. But first, for those of you new to the channel, let me say welcome. I'm glad you're here. You might be wondering, Bob, what in the world are we watching here? Well, you're watching me walk. I know that doesn't seem super exciting. But when you take into account that a year ago I couldn't do this, in fact, at that time I could barely stand for two to two and a half minutes without severe pain, this is pretty exciting to be out here walking every day. I'm not actually walking every day anymore because I'm doing my own yard work. I'm going to the gym to work out with weights two days a week. I'm going to the gym to walk in the pool as hard as I can with the resistance of the water two days a week. I'm doing a lot of other things. And these walks are more like my rest days now instead of my actual exercise. I am still planning a couple of big trail hikes coming up soon. But, uh, but yeah, that's what you're watching here. The whole point of this is to show you that it's never too late to change your life. Today is Monday, which means tomorrow is my one year anniversary on carnivore. And the day after that is my 60th birthday. So I started this way of eating the day before my 59th birthday. So I was already what many considered consider to be an old man. And I certainly thought of myself as an old man. And I felt like I thought old men were supposed to feel. I know a lot differently now. For those of you returning to the channel, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. This is going to be a great week. I've got a lot of interviews i got to prepare for. I've got the new uh, cable, cable machine exercises that I want to try and get in on Wednesday. I've got some new uh, traction shoes that are designed to be used in the pool because every time I would turn around and start going back the other way in the pool, it would take me five to ten steps to regain my traction from changing direction in the water. So I'm hoping those traction shoes can get me an even better workout. But let's jump on into it here. Let's talk about keeping it simple. You know, there's a lot of a lot of people out there in this carnivore space talking about well you need to track this, you need to do the other thing, you need to do this, so that, you know, they make themselves out to be the expert that you need to follow. Now, there are, there are actually some experts out there, and you all know who I consider to be the experts. I've talked about them many times. And, and they are, they are experts. But it's the, the pseudo-experts that are confusing people. And some of the things I've been saying recently may have been causing confusion. So I wanted to clear that up. Sorry, I just had to take a slight break and decide which way we were going to go starting to get windy and it's supposed to storm anytime now so I'm just going to turn around here at the top of this big hill 
and walk back the other way. There have been a lot of questions about how much protein is enough. And, you know, the general rule is 1.75 grams for every kilogram of lean body mass. What does that mean? Who knows? I was watching Professor K interview Sean. A good interview. I hope when I talk to Sean later this week that we can get into some more of the stuff that they talked about. But I had something interesting happen to me this week. I haven't mentioned it for the last two or three days because I wanted to make sure it was an actual thing before I started talking about it. Now, this is not science. This is my personal N equals 1 experiment, my own personal experience on this. I can't say this is going to happen for everybody. I can't even say that this is going to happen for anybody else. But, you know, I've had many people question on how healthy I might be. Because I've been eating between two to two and a half pounds of beef a day. And they're like, gosh, Bob, that seems like an awful lot of protein for you. And if you figure out the macros, which I've done some quick calculations, it, uh, it probably was quite a bit more than what the experts say I should have. But, the last five meals I've had, I couldn't finish them. I've been making the same amount of food as I always make, and now all of a sudden, I'm starting to get full sooner. I had a, a pork roast the other day that I couldn't finish, so I ended up getting a second meal out of it. And I looked at how much pork roast was left over that I didn't eat the day before, and said, well, I'm going to need at least six eggs with that, probably a little more. So I cooked eight eggs, just in case. And I only ended up eating about half the eggs that I'd made. I ate all the pork roast. And today, just as the final experiment, I got out my last package of two full pounds of ground beef. And I did not cook any eggs with it, because normally I'd have two or three eggs with that, because two two pounds of meat was the bottom end, you know, was the low end. But uh, I thought, well, I'm just going to start with two pounds of ground beef, and if I need a little more, it doesn't take very long to cook up a couple, three eggs. Well, I ended up not being able to finish the ground beef. I got close. I ate probably one and three quarters pounds. So there wasn't a lot left over, but I had leftovers again. So I pause it. And again, this is not science. This is just me reporting what happened to me, what I am noticing. Is that, you know, I've said many times, it's very hard to overeat on the carnivore diet if you're eating it correctly, you know the muscle meat of large ruminant animals and the associated fat that goes with it, it's really hard to overeat. And I think that again, on the long term, you may want to pay attention to how much protein you're getting. But I now believe that that's a 5% problem. 
and you've heard me talk about this before on the channel, what a 5% or a 10% problem is. And I think because I'm getting so close to what my original goal was, that my body is adjusting. And it's letting me know, hey, you don't need quite so much food. So remember what I say. Eat the meat, add the salt, drink the water. That will get you 90 to 95 percent of where you need to be. The rest of it, that final five percent, is yeah, you may have to play around some with some stuff and adjust some stuff, but it's not time to worry about that when you're just getting started or you're only halfway through your journey. Keep it simple, there's no magic formula. There's no special tracking required. You don't need to count anything. You don't need any of that stuff. Eat the meat, add the salt, drink the water, and your body will take care of the rest. I am my own, you know, I'm the personal experiment with that because I was eating, like I said, two to two and a half pounds of meat every day, and I lost, I'll tell you tomorrow how much I've lost in a whole year, but I continued to lose. I didn't have any problems. And just as I predicted at the start of this, it started to slow down when I got close to my goal. And it's been steadily slowing as I got closer. And now that I'm very close to my original goal, my hunger is not as big as it used to be. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. I mean, as long as you're eating an appropriate fat to protein ratio, I wouldn't worry about counting the protein macros or the fat macros or any of that stuff. Just eat until you can't eat anymore and then stop and wait till you're hungry and eat again. It really is just that simple, people. It really is. But that's what I've got for you today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this quick little walking video. Don't forget, get out there, be 1% better today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. I will see you tomorrow.